Okay, testing, testing. Suara okay ke tak? Dah screen jelas semua orang? Testing. Hai hai semua. Okay. Semua boleh tulis uh, komen anda kat chat group, live live chat dekat YouTube. Okay. Yes, Jason. Okay, thank you, Aiman. Okay, thank you, Sukian. Okay, Sha. Okay, so uh, without wasting any time, we start our lesson today. Okay, first of all, right, today we are going to have a reaction kinetic pre lecture KMK. Okay, so of course, I have to greet you all first. Welcome to my class. You are the most precious gift for me for these coming five months. Huh? Okay, next week is week one, and then we are have uh we have eighteen weeks. Okay, for the class, another one, uh, one or two weeks for the sem break. Okay, then we'll go for PSPM to find the exam. So I hope you all can enjoy my class within this few, these five months. Huh? Of course, who haven't subscribed my channel yet, please click subscribe now and then you can share this link with your other friends. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we start. Okay, for our lesson. 8.1, uh, 1.1. Last time is chapter 8, now it's chapter 1. Okay, reaction kinetic. There are three subtopic. The first one is reaction rate. And then the second one is collision theory and transition state theory. And then the third one is factors affecting reacting rate. Okay, for 8.2 and 8.3 actually is a short topic. Okay, and then the most important part is 8.1. Okay, now let's go through the important point for your lecture notes. Huh? Okay, so you should know what is reaction kinetic. Okay, so reaction kinetic is the rate of chemical reaction. So something happened when A plus B and then change to C plus D. So something happened. And then we need to consider the factors that affect this rate. This will, you will learn in chapter uh, 1.3. There are five factors that affect the rate of the reaction. And then you have to know the reaction mechanism by which reaction occur as well. Okay, now rate of reaction. According to the definition, right, reaction rate is the change in the concentration of a reactant or a product with time. So, but you must, this one, please highlight, this very important. The unit for the reaction rate is mole, a molar per second, okay? Molar per second. The molar is come from mole per liter or mole per dm cube, okay? So this, are the unit for reaction rate. Okay. And then we must know how to write down the rate expression for a reaction rate. So for example, okay, we are using the delta concentration A over delta T. Over delta T. Okay, the A is referred to the concentration. That's why when you write down the rate for a reaction, right, you must put the negative sign. Negative sign is a must. Okay, because the concentration of the reactant decreases after some times. Okay, and then the positive side is a must. The positive side is a must. Okay, because the concentration of the product increases after some time. Okay, yeah? so please remember, okay, for this slide, very important. The first part is the unit of the reaction rate. The second part is how to express the rate of reaction. You must write down the rate over here. You cannot straight away give me the answer. Negative delta A, concentration A over delta T cannot. You must write down rate equal to, uh, this point is very important, uh, rate equal to K. And then negative side for the concentration of reactant and the positive side for the concentration of product. Okay, okay so based on this graph, you know, okay, concentration of product, uh, product is B, getting increased after some time. And then the concentration of the reactant, the concentration A, getting decreased after some time. So these are the few terms about the reaction rate, average rate, instantaneous rate, and initial rate. Okay, so um, normally they will ask you how to interpret all of this based on a graph normally, but this is not a popular question. Huh? Okay, now look at this graph of concentration versus time. Okay, 
So um, no important point over here. You just need to know which one is the average red, the purple line, and then which one is the instantaneous rate, okay, the red line. Okay, so the curved line actually is the uh, reaction rate that obtained from the slope of the straight line. Yeah. I think the point, 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 point is depends on the experiment. Normally, it's based on experiment. Okay, for example, 60 seconds, okay, uh, what is the concentration of the peroxide? 120 seconds, what is the concentration of the peroxide? When you plot the graph, you will get a curve over here. Okay, and then you cross the red one, so this one is the instantaneous rate. And then this one is the average rate. So, and then, okay, you must know the average rate is the initial, uh, the final concentration of A minus the final concentration, sorry, the, init, the final concentration of A minus the initial concentration of A over T final minus T initial. Okay. Ah, okay. So, just now we know how to write out the rate expression, right? So, when a whole equation is given. When the whole equation is given, we need to know how to write out the differential rate equation. So this is the example of differential rate equation. Rate is a mass. Negative, negative for the reactant. Positive, positive for the product. Okay, dA over dt according to this equation. Huh? So A, B, C, D, the small letter, are the stoichiometry coefficient. Means one mole, two mole, three mole. Okay. And then negative sign is for the concentration of reactant. Positive sign is for the concentration of product with time. Okay, after you know how to write out the rate of differential equation, the question will continue ask about the calculation. It will ask about the formation, rate of formation, or rate of disappearance. Okay, formation in Malay is pembentukan. Kada pembentukan. Kalau disappearance means kada hilang, sudah tak ada. Okay, so... Alert, okay, based on here, negative because one mole delta N concentration N2 over dt equal to negative 1 over 3. Okay, always remember the coefficient is very important because you write down negative 1 over 3 delta hydro concentration of hydrogen over dt and then the concentration of product must be positive sign 1 over 2 delta concentration of ammonia over dt. Okay, after you write down the differential rate equation, you must understand what this differential rate equation talking about. So it means that the rate of this appearance, this appearance, why this two is this experience? Because concentration of reactant decrease after some time. So their relationship is so nitrogen is one over is the one over three of the rate of this appearance for the hydrogen and then one over two rate of the formation of ammonia. Here yeah? if the question asks you about how to explain so you have to write out this thing. Okay, so this is one of the example. Okay, I won't I, I, I wouldn't discuss in details. Huh? I just give you the idea what are you what you should learn in this chapter. So first write the differential equation that I explained just now. Now part two calculation. Okay, so the answer is given, so you go go through by yourself. I think this one should be no problem. And then okay, given that delta I iodine over dt is Okay, 1 for 8 times 10 to the power of negative 6. Voila. We check the question given by the question. Okay? If the question wants to ask you about calculation, right, you must, uh, one of the information must be, must be given. Okay, so you know the delta iodine over dt, okay, is 1 for 8 times 10 to the power of negative 6. So you're just using the differential rate equation to calculate. Okay, calculate what? Because the question asks about rate of this appearance of hydrogen iodide. So this is mathematic. Yeah, this one is mathematic. So you just move over here. Okay, and then so times 2, 2 times 1.8 times 2, get the answer. Okay, the negative sign is not in, uh, there is no negative sign for here. Even though here is negative, but there is no negative sign because the rate of this appearance need rate of formation is in uh, is um just bigger okay okay so you have to write down conclusion okay so let's check uh, again must write out the differential rate equation correctly okay 
jot down the information given and then based on the rate of uh, the differential rate of equation and then you check the relationship between hydrogen iodide and iodine and then do the calculation as usual it here is mathematic after you get the answer don't forget the unit and you must write down the conclusion for this kind of question the rate of disappearance is what the rate of formation is what and then you need molar percentage So this is another example. The concept still the same. Okay, you go to check by yourself. Okay, now we go for the next rate law, rate equation. Just now is reaction rate. Now is rate law. Please don't be confused, huh? You must hear what is rate, re reaction rate, what is rate law. Express the relationship of the rate of a reaction to the rate constant. And the concentration of the reactant raised to some power. The power is referred to here. X, Y is the power. K we call as rate constant. Okay, rate, this one you just you learn you learned just now. Okay. Rate is directly proportional to the concentration of reactant. Okay. And X, Y is the order with respect to X is with respect to A, the concentration of A. Y is the order of reaction with respect to concentration of B. And then the overall equation, the overall reaction order is X plus Y. Here, yeah? this is theory. We have to do some exercise in order to help you understand what is rate law. Okay, you go through this slide by yourself first. You know already what is X, Y. Are generally small, positive, or negative? Okay, not necessarily whole number. You can be 1.5, 1.25, okay, 2 also can. And then the value of the x and y, right, only be determined experimentally. So we have to do some experiment to get the value and then only can determine the order of reaction. So always define in terms of reactant. Please highlight. Okay, for this order of reaction, we just refer to the reactant. Here, the order of reactant is not related to the stoichiometry coefficient, means not related with the one mole, two mole, and so on. So, based on here, okay, this rate of this equation is first order with respect to chlorine and then the first order with respect to CiO2. Okay, if normally if there is this, there is, um, you don't, don't confuse, uh, here is based, the coefficient is based on the experiment, uh, the, 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 the. Okay, again, uh, the, this one we call is S, what is X? X, Y is the order of the reaction. K is the rate constant. And then rate, just now you learned already, is molar per second. Okay, the time is depends, uh, not necessary second, uh, can be minute, year, week as well. Okay. Just now, just introduction. Now we go for the order of reaction. We are going to learn zero order, first order, and second order. Zero order, okay, meaning that the x is referred to zero. Anything to the power of zero, the answer is equal to one. Therefore, for zero order, the rate actually is equal to the rate constant. And then rate is not depend on concentration A. Oh, for, for, for zero order, rate is not depend on concentration A for zero order. Okay. For first order, means here we'll choose the power of 1. Okay. Therefore, if you substitute the rate 1, means K, you know the concentration is 1, then you get rate equal to K. Okay, if the concentration A is double, 1 becomes 2. What happened? Okay, so the rate is 2 times. So meaning that for first order, double the concentration of the reactant will double the rate of reaction. Yeah, just now, rate is not depend on concentration for zero order. And then for first order, Double the concentration A will double the rate of reaction. Okay, how about second order? Second order, based on the order of reaction, is to the power of 2. It means 1 molar concentration for the A 
and then you try to double up. Okay, double up means one become two, 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 four, four K. So meaning that this is four times rig. Okay, if you double the concentration. So doubling the concentration A, the rig will increase by a factor of four, four, four or quadruple. Therefore, the reaction is second order with respect to A. Okay, so this you need to learn uh, zero first and second order. Okay, zero not depends on the concentration of reactant. And then first to double, and then for second, will factors of four, quadruple. Okay, for each of the following, okay, based on uh, this question, you have to determine the overall, okay. First up, there are two questions. Determine the reaction with order respect to each reactant. So this is two, this is one, and the overall three. This one, three over two. And then this one, 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 so it's two. Okay, let's check. Yeah, so this is the answer according to the power. Two, one, quarter, three. Three over two. Here, one, one. Overall, second order. After talk about the order of the reaction, now we continue with half line. Half line is the time required for the concentration of reactant to decrease to half of its initial value. So for example, the initial concentration is 100 molar. The first half line decreased half. So what is the answer? Okay, please write down your answer. Over the chat. Hi Putra, hi Sharina, Adrina. Okay, my question is just about if the initial concentration is 100 molar, what is the first, what is the concentration of the first half line? Everybody, please write down your answer over the chat. Okay, Madam Ulang Soalana, berdasarkan definisi kat sini half-life kan, half-life ialah masa yang diperlukan untuk mengurangkan kepekatan reaktan kepada separuh. Jadi kalau sekarang, Kepekatan saya ialah 100 molar. Apakah first half life untuk tindak balas ni? Okay, seems like you all not so active. Huh? Nobody reply over the chat. Huh? Are you staying with me? Okay, thank you, X Law. Yes, 50. Huna, Husna, thank you. Yes, 50. Okay, very good. How about the second half life? First half life is 50. Second half life? Okay, thank you for your answer. Yes, awesome. You answer correctly. Okay, my second question. What is the second half life? Yes, 25. Excellent, you are right. 25. So, you are doing the same thing. Huh? So, 100, 50, 25, 12.5 and so on. Okay, good. First, second, third half life. Okay, now... There are four parts you need to know for each order of the reaction. Okay. You should know the rate law, graph and calculation, unit of rate constant and calculation, integrated rate law, graph and calculation, and half-life, graph and calculation for zero, first and second order. If you check over here, calculation, 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 calculation. The concept of calculation, I keep on saying with my ex students, start with formula, correct substitution, final answer with correct unit. Okay, please take note uh, for this chapter, many students they can calculate, but their unit is wrong. So you must know how to get the correct unit because you cannot totally memorize the unit because the unit will change because different order, different unit. Here. Yeah. Okay, so this one, okay, explained already to the power of zero. So it not, not depends on the concentration. That's why rate equal to K. So this is the graph, rate versus concentration, constant, because it's not affected. Mm -hmm. Zero order. So zero order, right? If you still remember, what is the unit of the rate? The unit of rate is molar per second. Okay. So it's not depends. So K rate equal to K. 
meaning that the unit for the k remain the same. Molar per time. Why here is time? Because can be second, can be minute, can be hour, can be weeks, depends. Okay, that's why the general unit is molar per time. If the question given in second, molar per second. Okay, so this is the unit for k of k for zero order. Okay. Okay, next, this one. This is the, uh, using calculus, we can get this expression. Okay, this expression, we can call it as integrated rate law. Zero means initial, the initial concentration. This one normally we write out T as well. This is the concentration of T after some time equal to KT. So this is a graph of integrated break law for zero order. So why is negative over here? Because this one is negative slope. Okay, this is the initial concentration. No worry, yeah. this one just introduction. You just get some idea first. Here is the initial concentration because when the time is equal to zero, this is the initial concentration. Yeah. Okay, half life. This is the formula for zero order. Half life formula for zero order. Okay. And then this is the graph for zero order. Okay, still the same, uh, same, same as just now. Okay. Now is the application part. For the zero order, okay, given zero order, meaning that from here you know already the unit for zero order is molar per over here is second, so molar per second already. Okay, you know already. So what is the half life of zero point two five molar solution of ammonia? The question asks about half life. You have to apply the half life formula. How long will it take for the concentration of ammonia to drop from? So this is the initial. So this is the concentration of NH three at the initial. And then this is the concentration of ammonia after some time. Okay, so the question asks about how long. So many you must know the second. How many seconds? Because it's, it's second. Huh? So let's check. Formula, substitution, final answer with correct unit. So this one also the same. Formula, substitution, final answer with correct unit. Here, yeah. you must try to press yourself. Uh, try to press, try to do the question, write down all and press calculator by yourself. Huh? Okay, same thing happened to first order of reaction. You have to know the four item as well. Okay, so we know already first order depends on the concentration is uh, double, double up. Okay, and then this is the graph of the rate law for first order reaction. And then what is the unit for first order reaction? Okay, again, this one rig I mentioned already is molar per second or molar per time. Okay, I just put per second. Okay, over here, the concentration is to the power of one means M. Okay, so what is the unit for the K? So this one will bring over here, over M. So M, M cancel. That's why the unit is per second. So in general, the unit for K for first order reaction is per time. Yeah, please take note. Look. Zero order molar per time. First order per time. Okay, so this is the integrated rate law for first order. This is the, uh, okay, you transform it and then you get this graph. So this is the pattern of the graph. Uh. Alert, uh. For first order, we deal with lon. Lon. There are some pattern. Different order of the reaction, there is different different pattern. So for first order, using the lon concentration over time. Uh, this is another graph, concentration versus time for zero uh, for first order. Okay, now this is the half line for first order. If we check over here, right? The half life for first order is not dependent on the concentration because there is no concentration over here. Just ln two over k. Okay. Um, the half line graph is very interesting. Okay. Um, this one I will teach you during real class. Then you notice. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Example one. Ah, uh, write down the rate law, and then what is the unit of the rate constant? 
Okay, given already first order, so the unit for sure is per, per time. Is there any second? No, no, not mentioned. So the general is per time. Ah, okay. Yeah. First order, this is the first order with respect to iodine. This is iodine one, theosophate one. Okay, so rate law, you just write like this. So this is a rate law. K, rate equal to K, rate constant. And then concentration of S2O8, 2 negative power 1, concentration IOD negative over 1. So this is the rate law. Okay, unit. Okay. Rate is equal to molar per second. And then over here is M. M means M square. Okay, that's why now it's per molar per second. Okay, this is per molar per second. Okay, yeah. So now you know the unit of K is not the same. It depends on the rate and the order of the reaction. Over here, okay, M times M. That's why M squared. Rate molar per second. This one I keep on saying many times. Uh, the unit for rate is molar per time, molar per second. Uh, that's why cancel. This one is fixed. Uh. The unit for rate is fixed. But the unit for, the, for this one, not fixed. Because have to depend on the concentration of the reactant. Okay. Write rate law. Calculate the rate constant. Means rate constant is K. Uh, calculate the rate constant K. If the initial is given and then decline at the rate, okay, rate is given. So this is the rate equation, the rate law. So given, this is given. This one is given, so you calculate. Uh, formula, substitution, final answer with correct unit. So you notice, right? The question keep on repeating the same thing. Huh? So how long? Means time. In this case, you need to calculate the time. Okay, jot down, analyze the question, and then formula, substitution, final answer with correct unit. Please, huh? this is formula. This part is very famous. Uh. You have to know the calculation how to put the zero order, first order, and second order. Of course, you have to memorize the formula. No worry, later I will do a summary with you all. After the summary, it's right, easier for you to recall all of the formula for integration rate law, for the half line, the pattern of the graph, and the unit of each order of the reaction. Okay, same thing, second order. Yeah, same. So this is the pattern of the graph of second order. Okay, the unit of rate law means the rate constant for second order. Okay, based on here, rate is molar per second. So this is M2. That's why if you put over here, so M o molar per second over M2. So cancel, remain one here, cancel. That's why the unit is, you put over here, per molar per second, per molar per time in general. So this is the unit of K for first order. Okay, not first order, da, something. You check your lecture notes. Huh? So this one is second order. Second order, please do the correction. Second order. Okay. Per molar per time. Okay, so this is the integrated break law. Okay, the pattern for the second order is 1 over, 1 over. Just now, first order is long. Zero order, nothing, just concentration versus time. So now we notice that the integrated rate law for different order of the reaction, different pattern. So this is the curve. This is the graph 1 over concentration A over time versus time. Half line for zero order. Okay, this is the pattern. Okay, before I proceed, right, everyone, please observe the graph, the half-line graph for first order and second order. So this is the half-line graph for second order. And then this is the half-line graph for first order. What is the difference?
Yeah, I'll give you around one to two minutes to think. What is the difference between the first half line graph and the, uh, the first order reaction half line graph and the second order reaction half line graph? Everyone, please try to observe uh, what is the difference between the zero, uh, first uh, first order half right graph and the second order half right graph. Exponential. Okay, Ex first graph is exponential. Second is directly proportional. Um, not really. This is not the answer I want. Or oh, inversely. Okay. Okay. Keep on trying. Is that excellent? Other also can give your answer. I give you some tips. Check for the time. Just now we learned already half line. Okay, hundred become fifty, become twenty five, become twelve point five. Okay, you check for the time. For the first half line graph and the second half line graph. Second order half line graph. Yes, is interval okay? Yes, the clue is over the interval. If you notice, right? Okay, my power got some problem, uh, hanging up. Uh. Okay, if you notice, right? For first half line graph, the time for each half line is the same. Can you check? You notice, right? The interval of the time for the first half line, second half line, third half line, fourth half line is the same. Okay, same interval. Yes, very good. Jack, very good. Jason, very good. Okay, Shah. Okay, yes, very good. And then for the second order, it's double up. Okay, that's why we can determine the order of the reaction based on the half line graph. Half line graph is very simple. Why? Because it's the same. Concentration A versus time. Well, just now also the same concentration A versus time. Concentration versus time. So using the same type of graph, and then we check the time interval for each half line. It's the same. For example, here, 10 minute, 10 minute, 10 minute, 10 minute. Okay, this one is first order. If the pattern like this, okay, 10, and then become 30. Why? 10 times 2 equal to 20. 20 plus 10 equal to 30. Okay, so just now here, 10, 20. 20 times 2 is 40. 40 plus 30, 70. Okay, get the idea? Okay, so this is the pattern of the second half life graph. Okay, good. Let's proceed. Okay, so this is the example question for second order. Okay, so the question asks about concentration after two minutes and then half life. Okay, so concentration is given. This is the initial concentration for iodine. Oh, because there are two reactants. Uh. Okay, so just do it as usual. Formula, substitution, final answer if you need. Of course, you must know the order of the reaction because different order, different formula. So this is second order. That's why it's one over. Substitute, final answer with correct unit. And then half line, formula, substitution, final answer with correct unit. Okay, and then this is the question asked about uh, another half line for I, I2 with this concentration, two different concentrations. Uh, and then you get the answer. Okay, yes. Just now, very important. Zero order, first order, second order, very important. Okay, now we do some summarize. How are we going to determine the order of the reaction? Okay, there are four methods. So just now I teach you already for the half life. Based on the in interval, time interval, interval time, okay? And then unit, just now mentioned already. Okay, molar per second, zero order, 
per second, first order, and then per molar per second, second order. Okay, linear graph based on the integrated rate law. This one you haven't know yet, and then the rate law. Okay, and then the initial rate method. This one you haven't learned yet. Okay, let's continue. Okay, always remember there are four methods to determine the order of the reaction. Okay, if the question one, initial rate method, so you try to use initial rate method to determine the order of the reaction. If the question asks about half-life, then you use the half-life graph using concentration versus time. If the question asks about linear graph, then you have to apply the integrated rate equation and rate law. Yeah, if the question didn't ask, mention anything, it's up to you. So just now we, we don't know already the order of the reaction is depends, is based on experiment. That's why there are experiment one, experiment two, and experiment three, and then with the different initial concentration and with the different initial rate. So we are using the comparison method to determine the initial rate method. Of course, if you want to compare, right, since here there are two reactants, we have to compare. We cannot compare with two different different concentrations. Okay, for example, I try to use this experiment one and experiment two. Okay, yes, these two is the same. We can cancel off. Yes, we can compare experiment one and experiment two. We determine the order of the oxygen, order of the reaction of oxygen first, then only go for nitrogen oxide. Okay, if we check, uh, for 3 and 4, we cannot compare. You can, but a bit a, diff, uh, a bit uh, complex. Uh. Okay, easier to find the same similar one. Can solve, find this one first. Okay, I can compare. Okay, so if I want to determine the order of the reaction of NO, then I will use this one. Okay, if I want to determine NO, right, I will use this one. 3 and 1 because here I can cancel off. Yeah, so let's check the solution. Yes. So this is the solution. Step 1. Must write down the break law. Okay, here, here depends. You can X, Y, M, N, A, B, whatever. And then compare with two experiments. So must write down this. Okay, now you are comparing experiment 2 over experiment 1 and rig 2 over rig 1, substitute as usual. Okay, so it seems like here is the formula and then here is the substitution. After that, you will cal calculate in using mathematic way yeah, and then you get m equal to 1. So, conclusion is a must. So, step 1, write down the rig law. Number 2, substitute. Number 3, uh, sorry, number 2, suppose like formula. Number 3, substitute. And then number four, when you get the answer, then conclusion. Conclusion is a must over here. So the reaction is first order with respect to oxygen. Okay, because in this case, you cancel for the nitrogen monoxide. So remain here. So you are finding the order of the reaction for oxygen. So this, these sentences you have to write down. This is the conclusion. It's a must. And then the pattern of the conclusion is like this. Don't go to change other, other sentences. It could suggest the reaction is first order with respect to oxygen. It could. Jangan ada bahasa yang lain tukar songsang, no. Okay? So, after determining the order of the reaction of oxygen, now we go for NO. Hmm. So, again, so must write down here. Something like formula over here. Here is cancel already because uh, I'm using uh oxygen right so here is uh no so nitrogen monoxide cancer already because it's the same concentration to the power of n okay so this is n equal to two conclusion so overall okay what is the overall reaction here is second order just now is first order so the overall is third order so if you i will encourage all write down again for this one uh -huh. the conclusion Okay, please add up. Uh. So the conclusion for just now, this one is first order. So and then this one is second order. So you write down the conclusion. So this is to the power of one. And then this is to the power of two. If you didn't write out the one, also doesn't matter. Uh. If you didn't write out anything, it's equal to one. Please add on. Uh. 
after you find the order of the reaction for oxygen and nitrogen monoxide, you must do the conclusion. So the rate equal to K, concentration of oxygen to power of 1, concentration of nitrogen dioxide, uh, monoxide to power of 2. So this core reaction, uh, initial rate method. Uh, simple. Uh. Okay, now you need, um, I can skip already because just like I mentioned, uh, let, never mind, check. Um, here. Suppose it's mole per dm cube, right? But this one is dm cube per mole, meaning that is per molar per minute. So from here, I know this is second order. Okay, based on the unit over here, I know this reaction is second order. So that's why question number A and number B, you have to use the second order formula. So like this. This is the formula for second order. Substitute formula, substitute final answer with correct unit. Same for here. Okay. Since you know the order of the reaction already, right? You just substitute everything and then you can get the unit, uh, the value for rate and the unit for rate molar per minute. Okay, uh. Why per minute? Because the question given here is per minute. Here. Is it? Where, uh, here, per minute. Per time. Uh, depends. Uh. Can be second, minute, hour, week, year, century, also can. No problem. Okay, half life explained already just now. So this one based on graph. So based on the graph, you can determine the order of the reaction. Once you determine, you can write out the rate constant. Ha, ah, check. 180 initial, 90. So 90, 20. 45, 40. Ha, ah, 20, 20. X, X. Meaning that this one is first order. So based on the graph, first order. Okay, this is the explanation. Ah. You go and check. Ah. And then... Since you know this is first order, if determine the half line, you just substitute the formula, find the answer with correct unit. Okay. Fourth part. Linear graph method based on integrated rate equation and rate law. So this is the graph given. Time. And then this is concentration. This is one over concentration. So you will know this is actually for zero order. This is for second order. If you plot another graph, another another data, over here, you can put another one is first order means long, long concentration. Yeah. Okay. okay. For the linear graph, I will use the summary to teach you all. Yes, this is the overview for the order of the reaction. Zero order, first order, second order. Okay. This is the rate law or rate equation for different order of the reaction, the unit. And then this is the concentration versus uh, concent uh, rate versus concentration. Okay, this is not dependent on so not depend on the concentration. This one is directly proportional, this one is quadruple proportional. Then not depends, okay, double, quadruple. Okay, here, integrated rate law. So this is the integrated rate law formula for different order of the reaction. So based on here, when the data is given, right, when you plot the graph, so for zero order is concentration versus time. For first order is non-concentration versus time. And then for zero order is one over concentration of the reactant versus time. So the pattern for zero order, negative slope. Linear, that's why I call it linear graph. First order, negative slope as well. And then for second order, is positive slope. Okay, meaning that when the data is given, you plot. If you get this pattern, means is, if you're using concentration versus time and then get this pattern, meaning that this is zero order. If you use long concentration versus time, negative slope, this is first order. If you use one over concentration A versus time, then this is second order. Okay, half-life formula, and then this is the concentration versus time graph. Okay, so the interval, actually, just now this one is constant. This one double up. For zero order is half. 
Yeah, the interval time of each half life reduced to half. Okay, that's all for one uh one point one. Okay. Yeah, that's all for one point one. So this is the summary. That's just I summarized already. Okay, now we go for one point two. Okay, 1.2 and 1.3 is a short topic. So over here, you need to explain, explain the collision theory, define activation energy, explain transition state theory, and then draw the energy profile diagram. This one you learned already in chapter five. No, 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 in form four, chapter three, thermodynamic is the same thing. Exothermic, endothermic is the same. And then the energy profile diagram will repeat again in electrochemistry, uh, thermal chemistry. Okay. So what is collision theory? Collision theory is talking about the rate of direction is based on the number of effective collision over time. So there are term and condition, okay, in order to ensure that the collision is happened. First, must collide to right? And then must involve effective collision. All the molecule must possess a minimum kinetic energy, or we can say as activation energy. The symbol is Ea to initiate the chemical reaction. And then the molecule must collide in the right orientation. Okay, means they must okay left to right. Okay, they hit together. So this is a right orientation. So now we check the details of minimum energy. Okay, reactant is over here, and then this is the graph, and then here is the product. Okay, from the peak until reactant, here we call it as activation energy. And then from reactant to product, here we call it as enthalpy. Enthalpy we will look in detail in thermodynamic as well. Huh? So, activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required to initiate a chemical reaction. So, must pose a minimum energy. So, minimum energy means you have to overcome the activation energy, okay? And then Ea is the barrier to so prevent less energetic molecule from reacting. So later we will try how, how, how to lower down the activation energy. Okay, correct orientation. You can look it by yourself. Before, after collide, okay, we will join. For this one, after collide, okay, still not attached. In effective collision is like this. Transition state is the configuration of the atom and of the colliding species at the time of the collection. Okay, you just have to note here y axis is potential energy. X axis is the reaction pathway, reaction normally we say reaction pathway or progress. Huh? Normally we seldom use reaction coordinate. And then here is the activation complex. Okay, over here we call it as transition state as well. Okay. As I said just now, pick from the top until the reactant is Ea, and then from reactant to product is enthalpy. Yeah? Okay, so energy profile diagram means the exothermic and endothermic energy profile diagram. So we check the details. Huh? So this is exothermic. Okay, the potential energy of reactant is higher than product for exothermic. If you feel confused, I teach you one method, how to, how, how to remember. You just put a... You just put a figure over here. This is two. This is one. Okay, means pro, normally we use final minus initial, so it's one minus two. So it's negative one, meaning that this is exothermic because the enthalpy for exothermic is negative value. Positive endodermic. So this is the pattern of the exodermic reaction. Huh? So reactant, the enthalpy of reactant is higher than product. And then here is the activation energy. This is the forward activation energy. Over here is the enthalpy. And then the reverse is the whole thing. So from here, you know that actually the Ea reverse equal to the Ea forward sum with the enthalpy is the Ea reverse. 
Here are some calculation question asked. Uh, what is the EA forward? What is the EA reverse? What is the enthalpy based on the value given by the question? Okay, again, this one also exothermic reaction. Should be no problem. Okay, now we look at endothermic. Endothermic is the enthalpy of reactant lower than product. So again, you put here 2, here 1. So now it's 2 minus 1. So equal to positive value. So it's endothermic. So here, from the top until the reactant, Ea forward. Okay, from the product to the reactant is enthalpy. Now the Ea reverse is here. Okay, means from the top until the product is the Ea reverse. So now you know that Ea reverse plus enthalpy equal to Ea forward for the endothermic reaction. Uh, this is why I say yes, for the y-axis, normally we write as reaction progress. Okay, and then for the y-axis, potential energy. Okay, and then please take note now, uh, when you know the reactant, the species of the reactant, you must write the species of the reactant. Don't write in general. Okay, like this one. Okay, since you know the reactant is NOCl, so this is the species of the reactant. So this is the compound of the product. Write specifically. Don't write down reactant product. Uh. Okay, so here label EA, and then here is enthalpy. Here is the EA reverse. Okay. And then here is the transition state or the product we call it as complicated. Um, well, I just now we mentioned it's activated complex. Ah, activated complex. So now the question asks you to draw the potential energy and so on. Okay, so this is the answer. And then sketch the reaction profile diagram, activation energy, okay, calculation. I think it should be no problem for you all. Okay, so this is for 1.2. Okay, 1.3. Um, half, half is simple and half is calculation and the half is about explanation. Factors affecting reaction rate. So there are five, actually it's five. Uh, uh, concentration, temperature, catalyst, particle of size, another one is catalyst. Okay, you can ignore the pressure over it, just, you just Consider concentration. And then you must know, explain the effect of temperature on the reaction rate using Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve. Okay, and then next is F catalyst, no problem. Okay, and then this one is the new thing for you all. This one also involves graph, uh, graph plotting. Arrhenius equation. And they have to relate the temperature and activation energy to the rate constant based on the Arrhenius equation and determine the value K, E, A, T, and A using Arrhenius equation. There are two calculation or graphical method. So these are the factors that affect the rate of the reaction, the key point over here, right, you must mention how the concentration affect the effect, affect the rate of the reaction, okay, and then how to increase the frequency collision, and then what happened to the reaction rate. So this is the example for the collision to happen, okay, if more, more, more particles, right, the collision increase. So if there are two, two, just four collision. If there are three, two, meaning that it can form six collision. Okay, means higher concentration, the chance for the effective collision to happen increase. So the frequency of the collision increase, and then the rate of the reaction increase. Okay, pressure. Pressure we have to always relate with the volume. When pressure is applied, volume decrease. Mean pressure increase, volume decrease. So number of molecule per unit volume increase, resulting in increase of frequency collision. Because you see. Initial, for example, here is 100, 100 liter. Suddenly, you, the pressure is exerted. Now, the volume decreases. So, mean the chances for each of the molecule to collide increase. That's why increase of frequency collision. Then, only will increase the effective collision. Therefore, the rate of reaction also increase. Over here, we know the point. First, is about the Collision, the frequency of collision. Next, about the frequency of effective collision. Now is the rate of collision.
when we explain the factors that uh, that affect the reaction rate, you must talk about frequency collision, effective collision, and the rate of reaction. Of course, before you talk about these three things, please write down this the general explanation. Different factor, different general explanation. Huh? Okay, for temperature, we have to talk about the effect uh, the activation energy. Okay, so here frequency and then effective collision and then third one rate of reaction. The general one is based on temperature increase, kinetic energy of molecule increase. Okay, so this is the conclusion. Huh? Kinetic energy is directly proportional to the temperature. The kinetic energy of molecule is directly. So higher temperature, higher kinetic energy, higher rate of reaction. Huh, this is the Maxwell-Boseman distribution. Okay, so the first one, okay, the curve, the temperature is lower. This one lower, huh? this one higher. So that's why the temperature of T2 is larger than T1. When the temperature is larger, what happened? Okay, you see, more molecule. Okay, with enough kinetic energy to react and then form the product over here. If compared with the blue one, blue one just here. The blue is just a small amount. If you increase the temperature, it's getting more. The whole area over here is the molecule with enough kinetic energy to react. Means their success overcome the EA, the, the activation energy. So this is the explanation for the curve. Maxwell Bowman's distribution curve, we just check. Okay, particle size. Ah, this one you just imagine, you want to help your mom to cook something. Okay, you want to make a uh, fried chicken. Okay, you imagine you put a whole piece of chicken and then try to deep fry. Another one is you cut into small pieces and then deep fry. Which one can cook, uh, can cook faster? Of course, the small one. So smaller the size of the reactant particles, greater the total surface area exposed for reaction. So this is the general explanation for particle size. Huh? Then you repeat the same thing. Frequency increase, frequency of effective increase, so rate of reaction increase. Last factor is catalyst. Always remember catalyst won't change the amount or rate or anything of the reaction is just increase the rate sorry uh. yes it's increase the rate sorry it's increase the rate uh. it wouldn't change the amount form from the from the reactant to product <coughs> so this is the function of catalyst please remember it Once it increases the rate, so increase the frequency of collision, then increase the effective frequency of effective collision. No affect the enthalpy of reactant or product. Huh? Hmm. So without catalyst, the reaction is slow. After you add the MnO2, manganese, and then the reaction occur faster. Okay, repeat already. So this is the exothermic curve, but here you have to check for the red color and the orange color. What is the difference? The orange color is with catalyst. Then Y has lower EA. And then the red one is without catalyst, higher EA. So this is the function of catalyst in a reaction rate. Okay, this is end of the mix, still the same. Okay, from the top here, this is the EA with catalyst. And then over here, this is the EA without catalyst. Okay, now we go for our last part. Okay, uh, I promised one hour, but now I think more than five minutes already. So give me another five to ten minutes. Uh. Arrhenius equation. So over here, the most important part is this. So the scientist is, this is the name of the scientist. So K is referred to rate constant. A is referred to the frequency factor. E is the natural log exponent. EA, activation energy. 
And then the R, as usual, that you learn in chapter 5, universal get constant, 8.314. And then T, temperature, must be absolute temperature, means the units must be in Kelvin. Huh? So this is the last formula for this chapter, Arrhenius equation. Okay, now this is the graph for the rate constant over temperature. Okay, you try to um, natural log on both sides and then you try mathematic way. Uh, this is the mathematic. Uh, so and then you generate everything and then finally you get this equation. Ah, this is the most important part. And then you transform the equation like the pattern of y equal to mx plus c. So y is referred to ln k. m is referred to negative ea, the activation energy over the r constant and then 1 over t is the x uh, x axis is 1 over t here t must in kelvin uh, and then plus ln a a is the c so meaning that when you want to plot this graph right must ln k versus 1 over t ln k versus 1 over t so when you draw this you get a negative slope based on the slope okay you can find out two points Okay, two point. So this is uh, x1, y1. So this one is x2, y2. So using the coordinate method, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, you can get the slope of the graph. And then you must know the slope of the graph actually is negative Ea over R. So from here, we can calculate the Ea. Calculate the activation energy. So, do you understand what is the, the, the objective of this formula? And then why this one is y? So, why this one is m x plus c? So, the m is the slope. Kachurunan. M is the kachurunan. Okay, so negative Ea over R. Here, you can find out the Ea. Why? Because R is constant. 8.314 joule per mole per Kelvin. So, this is determine the uh, activation energy by using graphical method okay so this is an example so you plot the graph and you get it okay now we go for the calculation method we also can apply apply the activation energy based on calculation method so ln k1 is like this ln k2 is like this and then subtracting ln k2 from ln k1 okay after subtract you get this final answer so remember for this is enough please take note up huh? K1 over K2. Long, okay, you do the K1 over K2 first, huh? and then Ea over R here is 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Please take note. K1 to K2, and then 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Huh? Okay, so as usual, formula, substitution, find the answer with unit. So this is the example. Of course, you must identify which one is K1, which one is K2, what is the temperature, and then make sure that this is in Kelvin. Then only can calculate the activation energy. So this is another example. Determine the rate constant based on the here. Okay. You can, because this formula, right, if we, the question can, might ask you K1, K2, might ask you Ea, must ask you T2 or T1. There are five possibilities for this formula to ask. K1, K2, or the ratio of K1 or K2, and then Ea. Okay, always remember the Ea that you find here is in joule. If the Ea given is kilo in kilojoule, you must times 10 to the power of 3. Yeah? Please take note. Huh? Because here is kilojoule. That's why you must times 10 to the power of 3. And then make sure temperature is Kelvin, and then you get the answer. Okay, temperature, this is what I say, determine the temperature. So you just substitute, write out the formula, substitute, and then get the final answer with unit. There are five possibilities, I repeat again, the question can ask you K1, K2, Ea, T2, T1, or the ratio of K1 to K2, also can. Okay, frequency, uh -huh. frequency means I have to determine the, here, long K, da, 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 da. so okay, determine the frequency. So over here, I won't uh, talk in details because all is about formula, substitution, final, and final answer with correct unit. So you try to do it by yourself. Familiar with the formula, then try to substitute. Jangan sekadar baca je. You kena angkat pen anda, angkat kertas anda, tulis dan kira. Okay?
So, okay, finish for three. Okay, let's check here. Okay, for all my new students, actually, right, I uh, Sha, Sha will know, okay, Sha will know because I always encourage my students to do the short note by yourself. Okay, so this is a short note for 1.1, just how so I guide you all. So easier for you to remember the pattern of the graph, the formula, half-life formula, integrated rate law formula. Okay, you see, ha, huh, this is another short note for the endodermic and exodermic. Here, what is the collision theory? How effective collision happen? Okay, actually, this right is in my IG. You can follow my IG as well. Huh? The name still the same, Kenny Kong SL, I think, or Kong SL. Okay, all this diagram in my IG. You just follow and then get the diagram through over there. So this is one of the example exercise. You try to do it by yourself later and then we check the answer whether correct or not. Huh? Okay, this is summary for factors affecting reaction rate. So what should you know? Okay, so this is the general statement that I said before. The red, yellow, okay, is the general statement. And then the second, the third one, and then the last one is keep on repeating. Frequency of collision increase. So frequency of effective collision increase. So the rate of reaction increase. Get it? This one is um, help you easier, okay, to understand the different and similarity for a topic. And then enhance your understanding and memorizing. Okay, this is Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. So you can do the graph and then the explanation over here. Okay, this is the overall for the Arrhenius equation. Okay, always remember attitude determines altitude. So I hope all my students have a good attitude. If you haven't subscribed, please click subscribe now. Any question you can text me here. That's all for today. Thank you. Okay, before we end, right, I have five minutes Q and uh, I have to share something with you all. Please put down the final answer for your tutorial. Okay, this is the final answer for your tutorial. Please jot down now. Okay, and then you can leave your comment over here. Anything you want to share with me, around 50, 50 of you. Excellent, the fifth. Catalyst. Okay, so please jot down the final answer for your tutorial chapter one. Eh? You can try to go through all the lectures by yourself now and then try to do the tutorial. Okay, eh? so if the number is not given means, uh, for example, why there is no 11? No 10 and 11, meaning that that one is the explanation question. So I just share with you all, share the calculation final answer with you all. Okay. Okay. So thank you and goodbye. See you on next week. Bye.